All right, it's time. It's finally time. It's puzzle day. It's puzzle day. It's puzzle day. Today I am packing up the studio and taking the show on the road to my friend's studio space to put together the entire 24,000 piece puzzle for the first time. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Oh hey. my gosh, wow. <laughs> All right, now drive it carefully. You have precious cargo in here. Got it, got it, Not me, the puzzle. <laughs> yup, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Penny, your first time out to the outside world. Okay, this is getting a little creepy. Karen, do you need to be alone for a second with the puzzle? No, it's okay, it's okay. My baby's just growing up. All right, we got the Steve, we got the Karen, and we have, da, 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 da. it's not zooming, the, <laughs> the puzzle. Hello? What's up? Hey. How's it going? All right, so we're at the studio. We're getting all set up. We have this beautiful little corner to put the puzzle together, but um, this is a wood shop. The floor is a little dirty, so since we are in the fashion district, we're gonna go get some fabric to cover up the floor. All right, it's time. It's finally time. First though, I am going to put on uh, knee pads. So I'm about to be crawling around on the floor. All right, here we go, here we go. It's 24,000 pieces. How long do you think this is gonna take you to put together? Well, considering that now it's 48 pieces, um, hopefully not that long. Oh my God, it's heavy. In total, this weighs 25 pounds. All right, now I have to remember which section goes where. <laughs> so that one goes there. I really should have put these in order before I started this. Okay, I have a strategy now. So I'm putting all the top ones up at the top, all the middle ones in the middle, and all the bottom ones at the bottom. <laughs> and then I'll put them in order from there. Oh no, I lost a piece. Where did the piece go? Okay, well, I'll find it eventually. It has to be here somewhere. You see it? Yes. Okay, top row, top row finished. What are your thoughts with this top row finished? I mean, I couldn't really picture the scale of it. It's wild seeing the actual scale of it. The last three pieces. Here we go. All right, that's it. Wow. There it is. This is amazing. Yeah, this is incredible, Karen. I can't believe that a, a single person had the strength of will to put that together. I can't believe I did it. I did my dream puzzle. It's all together now. How do you feel? I can't believe I'm looking at it. I've been wanting it for so many years. I can't believe I'm, even though I've completed it, I can't believe I'm seeing it, do you know what I mean?
Can I twerk on top of it? <laughs> That'll be uh, for the OnlyFans. Oh my gosh, <laughs> I can't believe it's all together. I did it. It's here, it's here. The final puzzle is here, I did it. So here is what you have all been waiting for, the final statistics. I have a lot of statistics, are you ready? So the puzzle's final size is 14 feet long by just over five feet long, maybe like five foot two which means that it is taller than I am and you can fit almost three of me <laughs> the other way. <laughs> this is massive. Honestly, I didn't understand the scale of it until I was in this room right now looking at it. And my total time, drum roll please. <laughs> 157 hours and 28 minutes, which is the equivalent of six days, 13 hours, and 28 minutes. So I spent almost an entire week of my life just putting together this puzzle. So here are the times per section. As you can see, easily the slowest section was section one and the fastest was section two. But here's what's interesting. Section one had the fastest sorting and section two had the slowest sorting. So that just goes to show you how important that initial sort is to the amount of time that the puzzle is gonna end up taking you. And what else is interesting is that sections three and four literally only had a 12 minute difference. So by the time I got to the end of the puzzle, I had it down to a science. I knew exactly what I was doing. I can't believe that they were that close. So in terms of the edge, section three had the fastest edge, but honestly, all of them were pretty comparable. The edge never took me all that long. So here is a graph that shows the time progression of each day that I worked on it per section. And you can see that section one clearly took the most amount of days. And you can see how section two would go on to be the fastest altogether because I wasn't doing that many hours per day. And then, as I said before, sections three and four followed very, very similar trajectories because I basically did them in the exact same amount of time. Okay, so the day that I spent the longest on the puzzle in a single day was in section three when I spent nine hours and 48 minutes on the puzzle in one day. I think that was the day where I had filmed all day and then I went back after dinner and worked on the water off camera. So <laughs> that was a long day. And then the day that I spent the least amount of time on it was actually the final day when I put in that last little bit. I only spent an hour and five minutes on it that day. And there was another day in section two in the sorting where it was about the same amount of time. So my average daily time was five hours and 15 minutes, which is actually a little lower than I thought it would be, but I guess all the days of the sorting where I only did a few hours a day kind of brought that down. And if we look at all of my time cards, I did 94 different in and out sessions in total. So here is the chart, which is the visualization of showing all of the times that I worked on it. And I think this one is the most satisfying of all of them. And of course, I wanna say thank you to my sister for making that spreadsheet for me so that I could give you all of these beautiful statistics. So 
surprise, I also brought both of the 5,000 piece gradient puzzles. So I thought it would be fun to put these together next to the 24,000 piece puzzle so you can see just how huge this puzzle is. <laughs> It's like no sections at all. This is tiny. They're both gonna fit on here with no overlap. <laughs> this is so wild. That is huge. Do you remember how big those puzzles seemed when I first put them together? And they both easily fit on the giant puzzle with room, with so much room to spare. To me, it looks like you made three puzzles that look like they could have fit both Jack and Rose. Don't let go. So just for fun, I thought that I would also bring a normal thousand piece puzzle and we can just uh, look at the size differences. It's so tiny. <laughs> so this is what a normal sized puzzle looks like. And uh, you know, we have 24 of them <laughs> in this whole thing. So I am currently sitting on 35,000 pieces. It's a lot of puzzle pieces. So now that I've seen what the puzzle looks like on the floor, I figured while we're here, we might as well also put it up on the wall. So just like I did after the second section, we're just gonna tape each panel to the wall and then it'll be on the wall. <laughs> we're making puzzles so exciting here.
All right, so now I'm going to answer some of your questions. My first question actually comes from my sister who wanted to know why it took me so long to do this puzzle because, you know, I've been wanting to do it for 10 years. Why didn't I just do it in the past decade? I mean, it's mostly just the price. <laughs> it's pretty expensive. I think when it was being sold new, it was probably like $300. I bought it on eBay for 500. And when I was in college 10 years ago, like <laughs> I just didn't have that kind of money. And also I always kind of assumed that if I did it, I was going to do it all as one giant puzzle. And I've never had the space to do that. I really only recently realized that I did have the space to do it section by section. So I figured I'd do that. And you know, maybe sometime in the future, I'll do it again, but all as one giant puzzle. Also, I am very glad that I did wait until now to do it because 10 years ago, I would not have had the skills to document it and bring all of you along with me on this journey. So I'm just happy that everything worked out the way it did so that I could make all these videos for you. All right, so a lot of you all did ask, would I ever do it again, but all mixed together? And yes, of course I would. I would love to do that sometime in my life. They actually released this puzzle twice. So the one that I have is the black box design, but they also released it with a light blue box design. So I'd love to get that other version and then you know, someday when I have enough space, do the entire thing all at once. So one of the questions that a ton of you asked was what was my favorite section to do? And out of the four, my favorite was definitely the first section, just because I was really getting to know the puzzle. I was learning about all of its little quirks and it was just really fun to do a giant puzzle for the first time in like a really long time. Like I did the 5,000 piece gradient puzzles, but besides that, it had been years and years since I've done a puzzle this big. And then you guys also wanted to know what were my favorite and least favorite parts of the puzzle to do. So I loved the hot air balloons. I thought they were so fun. I also loved all of the sailboats, really anything colorful and graphic that is my favorite type of puzzle to do. And then my least favorite parts of this puzzle was all of this coral at the bottom where they're bigger and different textures. It was fine, but here in the middle where everything all kind of looks the same, it took forever. I actually think that all of this coral I think was more difficult than all of the blue in Atlantis. <laughs> Controversial take, I know. <laughs> so the next thing that you all wanted to know was what I think of Educa puzzles, because this is actually the first puzzle I think that I've done from this brand. And I thought it was great. Um, I do wish that the pieces locked together more tightly because when I was moving sections around, you couldn't just pick up large sections, it would just kind of crumble apart. So I had to do it a little bit at a time or slide it onto paper to move it around. Also, I do wish the piece shapes were slightly more unique because there were a handful of times where I had a piece in the wrong spot and I only realized later on. But for the most part, I mean, considering the logistics of manufacturing a puzzle of this size, I think it's totally fine. I would give them like a seven out of 10, which is definitely, you know, totally fine. And then something that a lot of you wanted to know the entire time that I've been working on this puzzle is what did I listen to while working on the puzzle? So I got through five audiobooks. I will put them on screen. I really enjoyed all of them. And then I'll also put up a list of the podcasts that I listened to, which I'm going to separate into true crime and not true crime, because I know that that's not everybody's thing, but I enjoy it, so these are the ones that I like. I will say that around section three, I got a little bit podcasted out. So for that one, I actually listened to just a lot of music, but uh, for the most part, podcasts and audiobooks. 
And now, the ultimate question. This is what everybody wants to know. What giant puzzle am I going to do next? <laughs> and the answer is, I have not decided yet. So here's the thing with giant puzzles. Typically, they fall into one of two categories. First is fine art, which, you know, these paintings are beautiful. Of course, I appreciate them for what they are, but the colors tend to be fairly drab, so I don't really want to do that type of image as a giant puzzle, because you would just have huge sections that look exactly the same. And then the other trend in giant puzzles is just having a bunch of images next to each other in a grid, which to me kind of feels like a cop-out. Like if I'm gonna do a puzzle, I want it to be one image that all connects to each other. I think that is way more fun than doing like 10 separate pictures that all just happen to connect in a grid. So that's why I love this puzzle so much. The artwork is by Royce B. McClure, and this is a composite of 20 years of paintings that he's done. So if you go on the website for this puzzle, you can see the original paintings and, you know, then spot them in this puzzle. And he really, really designed this puzzle to make sure that every single inch would be fun to do and interesting to do as a jigsaw puzzle. The fact that he put so much thought into the design of this puzzle, I honestly think that's why it's been my dream puzzle for so long, because I really do think this is the best image that I've seen for a giant puzzle. So all that being said, what big puzzles am I interested in? Well, there is one that I cannot find anywhere online. So if anyone has one and wants to sell it to me, please get in touch. <laughs> okay, don't laugh, don't laugh. It is the 9,000 piece Minions puzzle from Ravensburger. <laughs> I know, Minions are so cheesy, I know, I know. But I think the image is just so fun and so colorful. I would love to do this as a jigsaw puzzle. I just can't find this one for sale anywhere. So, you know, hopefully someday I'll find it. So Ravensburger has a few others at 9,000 pieces, which I'm interested in. And for those, I would definitely mix everything together and do it as, a, you know, one 9,000 piece puzzle instead of two 4,500 piece puzzles. Back to Educa, they have a 33,000 piece wildlife puzzle, which is definitely a popular one. They also have their 42,000 piece around the world puzzle, which I've seen a bunch of people do online. And I know that a lot of you want me to do it. Okay, back to Ravensburger. I know I said no grids, but they have this keep herring puzzle, which I think looks really fun because it's so bright and graphic. They also have two wildlife puzzles, which I think could be fun. I like this one because even though it sort of does look like a grid, all of the images connect to each other. So it's as if you're looking through a window is not just four random images that have nothing to do with each other. So they also recently came out with a Paris puzzle, which I think is fairly new. Um, there's also the Star Wars puzzle, which I'm not into Star Wars, but it could be fun to do as a puzzle, I don't know. And then there are a few random ones from Clementoni and from Hay that I like, but yeah, that's a lot of options. I have not quite decided yet. All that I can tell you is that whatever I decide to do, I will commit to mixing at least some of the sections together so that whatever I do is more than 6,000 pieces. And of course, I will keep you all updated once I decide which one I'm going to take on next. Well, this has been such a fun day full of puzzling, but I think it's time to take the puzzle down. Tons of you have been asking me what I'm gonna do with it now, and for now, it's going to live in the box. 
hopefully someday when I have a more permanent home than my current apartment and I have a little more space, maybe I can mount it on the wall permanently, but we're not quite there yet. Well, that is a wrap on the 24,000 piece puzzle. I can't believe that it's over. And I can't believe how many of you came along on this journey with me. It's just so wild how many thousands of people have watched me put this giant puzzle together. I would love to know in a comment, would you ever want to do this puzzle? Or maybe one of the other ones that I showed? Do you think you would ever take on a giant puzzle like this? So I'm actually working on a few bonus videos related to this puzzle, so stay tuned for those. And of course, very soon I will be back to my normal puzzle programming. <laughs> I have so many puzzles in the back room that I just need to make videos about. So if you've watched all the way to the end of this video, your code word will be life. So really, truly, thank you for watching and happy puzzling.